our scripture reading today comes from Luke chapter 23. Jake, I gave you the wrong chapter. Chapter 23, same verses. And this has to do with the crucifixion of Christ, but I want you to focus mostly on what it was that Jesus said, which are the last words that he had before he died on the cross. Verse 44, and it was about the sixth hour and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. One, one of the writers says he dismissed his spirit. Let us pray. Father, again, we're thankful today for your word and for this part, Lord, that we've read. And just ask, Lord, that you'd open our hearts and our minds to it. Help us to gain that that you have for us in the name of Christ. Amen. Um, I believe today is the first Sunday in what they call Lent. How many of you are familiar with Lent? Okay. Lent is a time that uh, has been set aside by many of the churches for people to take the time to prepare themselves for the events of Holy Week crucifixion and the burial and the resurrection of Christ. Now, Lent is not in the Bible, so don't go looking for it. Uh, it's not in there. It's a tradition that's been set aside, uh, and it started with the Catholic Church. Uh, but just because it's not in the Bible doesn't mean that it can't be good too. And a lot of people use the 40 days of Lent to prepare themselves for the great things that the Lord had in store for us at Easter. And by the way, Easter is in the Bible. One time, it is mentioned. I'm trying to think of Acts chapter 12, verse 4. Uh, Easter is mentioned in connection with uh, Peter when he was arrested after the apostle James had been killed by Herod. They did not bring Peter out to be executed because it was Passover and they said they were waiting until after Easter. The only time it's mentioned in the Bible. But the events of Easter are mentioned a lot, particularly the resurrection and the crucifixion of Christ. Our scripture today deals with the crucifixion. But more than that, 
when we read what Jesus did in dismissing his spirit to God, it gives us assurance that there's coming a day when all of us will also dismiss our spirit. And if we love the Lord and have dedicated ourselves to him, our spirit goes to be with the Lord. And so that's a great assurance and it makes it worthwhile for us in this life to serve the Lord. Let's look what Jesus said. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Now, he started that phrase with the word Father. Same start as the first thing that Jesus said after they nailed him on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And so Jesus there was thinking about forgiveness for others. Here he's thinking about his own spirit and what he's choosing to do with himself as far as his faith in the Father's will. Remember, it was God's will that Jesus hang on the cross. It was God's plan that he hang on the cross. And because of that, every one of us can have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ ourselves. We can one day, when we come down to the end of the way, commend our own spirit to the Lord and we'll be with him forever. Now, God created all of us to have fellowship with him. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had this wonderful fellowship with Almighty God. The Bible pictures God coming down on earth in the Garden of Eden and walking in the cool of the day with Adam and Eve. What a wonderful fellowship they had until they disobeyed God. And when they disobeyed God, they sinned against God. And because they sinned against God, this was the day that we all took on a debt that we could not pay. But thank God, Jesus hung on the cross until his life was gone and he had dismissed his spirit for you and me so that we could have a relationship with Almighty God. Folks, think about it. We have a fellowship through the Holy Spirit with Almighty God, the creator of the universe. Think about what that means. That every day when we get up in the morning and no matter where we go or what we do, God is with us every day. We have fellowship with him. And we are created more than just a body and a soul. We have a spirit. Just like Jesus had a spirit and dismissed his spirit to God. 
And one day, our spirit will go to live with the Lord as well. But when the fall into sin took place in the Garden of Eden, from that day forth, everyone that's born in this world is spiritually dead. But Christ died on the cross that we could be made alive again. He died on the cross so we could start all over again and have a new life. A life where we are alive in the spirit of Christ. We have that assurance because of what Christ did for us. And we get that spiritual relationship with God by having a simple childlike faith in God and in what Jesus did on the cross for us. When we receive him by faith, we become the children of God. And everybody else that knows him are our brothers and sisters in Christ. We are a part of the family of God. The Bible says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. What a privilege to be a part of the family of God. I mean, it's the biggest family in the world. the biggest and the best. You won't find any better people than these right here. You can look far and wide and you won't find any better people than God's people. Not only does he <clears throat> adopt us into his family, but he takes care of us day by day. He feeds us day by day. We have a place to live, close to where. Paul said, but my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We have everything that we need. In Christ. I remember a long time ago when I first started preaching, I pre in response to something that someone said to me, you learn to not do that when you get to be an older preacher, but uh, I was a young preacher then. And in response to something someone told me, 
that I would have to, if I was going to be a preacher, I'd have to have seven new suits to wear. And I only had one at the time. And I wore it out. But I preached a sermon called All I Need is Jesus. And when you think about it, He is all we need. You say, wait a minute, we need to eat. Yeah, but he sees that you eat. I need a car to go to work. He sees that you get a car to go to work. There isn't anything you got that he hasn't given you. Okay? So he is really all we need. Our Heavenly Father is rich and He's able to give you everything you need. Now what I'm talking about here is assurance of a relationship with the Lord and assurance that He's going to take care of you. You can't get this anywhere else or in any other way. It's not possible. People have tried through their own efforts to do what Christ does for us through ceremonies and rituals to be part of the family of God but it can't happen that way. It can only happen by faith in Christ. Jesus stayed on the cross until it was time. And by the way, he chose the time to dismiss his spirit to God. That means it looked like the Roman government was in charge, but really the Lord was in charge, carrying out a plan. And sometimes when you look around in the world today, it looks like somebody else is in charge. But make no mistake, God has control of everything, good and bad. The death of Jesus was entirely voluntary. The Romans didn't kill him. He said himself, I'm laying down my life so that I can take it up again. He was completely submitted to his father's will. And his father had a plan. And the plan was for Jesus to make it possible for there to be a kingdom of God, not only on this earth, but a kingdom in heaven as well. And Jesus was part of that plan. He didn't die as a martyr. He died as a savior. Okay, remember that. A Savior. Your Savior. Died for you. He 
he didn't come to this earth just to be a good moral example or to be a great teacher. He came to die because that was God's plan. And if you want to go to heaven, you better stick to the plan. Right? God's plan. You ain't going any other way. Because he's in control. He was a substitute for you. You're the one that sinned. I'm the one that sinned. But he took our place so that we wouldn't have to die. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So if you want eternal life, you got to get it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And when we come down to the end of the way, and by the way, we don't know when the end of the way is. So if we're going to get ready and get right with the Lord, we better do it before the end of the way comes. And just think about how God made this so simple and so easy that even a little child can understand it. And the world's tried to complicate it so much that nobody would understand it. But God keeps it simple. You take Jesus and I give you life. You give me your sins and I'll give you eternal life. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. And then, when we come down to the end of the way, we can say the same thing that Jesus said. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit and then you're set for eternity with the Lord I'm about to give out but I ain't give up let us pray Father, again, we come this morning thanking you for every blessing of life. We thank you especially as we begin to approach this Easter season for what Jesus did and for your plan of salvation for us all. God, help us to make sure Help us to have the assurance that we belong to you and that we'll spend an eternity with you. And if there's one here this morning that doesn't know that, we ask, Lord, that you'd touch their heart today in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. <clears throat>